All's well. Main gate, all's well. West wall, all's well. Port. Port. Uh, uh, uh. Guard, halt. Sergeant, dismiss the guard. Forward, halt. your mind, Reverend? Thank you, Captain. Scared to take a shot at you? No. Maybe you'd rather stay with the Yankees and get you three meals a day. I want to leave as much as any of you. You're still welcome to come along. I can't. I told Major Benton I can't condone what you intend doing if the escape is successful. Scared rabbit. Sometimes, Lieutenant, you make it hard for me to remember I'm a man of peace. One time's all you'd forget it. That's you? enough, mister. Start down. Major Benton's waiting. You next.
be three, four miles to the border. Any idea how wide this river is? It's about 50 yards. <laughs> Stop the bleeding. There'd be nothing to stop if you hadn't opened fire. May yeah, I respectfully remind the Major that there wouldn't have been any Yankees left on the wall if I'd been permitted continuous fire. I don't think I can afford you, mister. You're too nervous on that trigger for everybody's good. One of them might run in the pack. I'm dripping blood. Not much chance I'll run in her. Lloyd, we've got to get across that border. You understand, don't you? Don't have to draw me a picture, Major. Anyway, if I have to bleed to death, I'd like it better sitting down. Once we get him to the river, Put together some kind of raft. Float him across. He's not going. Let's get started. I can't leave him, Neil. This way. We're quitting the trail. You want those months of tunnel digging to go for nothing? We can't leave him. I gave an order, Captain. Double quick.
let me help you, soldier. You paralyzed or something? We pay as much as any state in the Union. I'm Canadian. We take Canucks. Take anybody except Rebs. Two weeks training at Plattsburgh, then ship you south by boat. I get seasick. something for you? Oh, yes. Uh, my bank in Montreal gave me your name, Mr. Anderson. I'm Neil Swayze, Montreal Feed and Grain Company. Come in and sit down, sir. Thank you. Thinking of doing some business with us? Well, I'm just exploring. I might buy some acreage around here. Oh. Stogie? Thank you. All is glad to see new blood come to town. Particularly young blood. Not much of it left these days with the revs not known on their whip. Well, being Canadian, I'll have to leave the fighting and the arguments up to you fellas. I'm only interested in making myself a dollar. An enviable position, being a neutral. Buy cotton from the Rebs, pay with guns. Get the guns from us and pay off in cotton. Sharp business, Mr. Swayze. Very sharp. Well, that makes the war pleasant and profitable. Yes. Well, I've got a list here of available properties. Glad to have my clerk, Lipscomb, take you around. Yes. Well, maybe I'd better look them over first myself. Any suggestions where I might be able to stay in town? Depends if you like things elegant or you prefer good vittles. Mm, good vittles. Three times a day. Widow Bishop sets the best table. Also clean, genuine feather beds and not stingy with the soap and water. Well, that's the signal for the latest war news. Maybe they caught the rebel prisoners. Rebel prisoners? Yeah, seven of them. All officers escaped last week from Plattsburgh. Six still at large. Let's come lock the vault. What happened to the seventh officer? Our boys killed him. Shot him ten times. Imagine that. Ten times. Push in after me, Mr. Swayze. Can't stop old Sherman. My boys with that army. Savannah will get what Atlanta got. If I were General Sherman, I wouldn't leave a stick standing. They've got it coming. Who is the positive gentleman in uniform? It's Captain Foster, recruiting commander for our district. Stays at Widow Bishop's. Lipscomb, back to business. I don't know why we all run for the news. Outcome of the war is a foregone conclusion. I guess a job like Captain Foster's requires a lot of assistance. Soldiers. Only four. But Lionel acts like it was a whole regiment. The way it spruts. Anderson at the 
the bank, send you over about a room. Sends everybody. Hey, come in, sir. I'll catch Miss Bishop. tells me you came about a room. It was about a room, wasn't it, Mr.? Uh, Swayze, Neil Swayze. Yes, uh, uh, uh well, I, I didn't mean to stare, but uh, Mr. Anderson mentioned the widow bishop. I guess I was expecting to see someone older. Wars make younger widows. I'm sorry. Now, about the room, Mr. Swayze. Yes, uh, do you have a vacancy? Several. This way. Will you be staying long? Well, I don't know. I'm down from Montreal on a business trip. If things work out, I may stay on. The room is a dollar and a half by the day, ten dollars a week. With meals, of course. According to Mr. Anderson, your meals are the talk of Vermont. Mr. Anderson has to post business. He holds the mortgage on this house. <laughs> Here, mister. We were playing war. Through windows? This is where the rebels were capturing Olga. She lives next door. Olga Curtis, next door. We were going to save her from the rebs. All right. Sit down, soldiers. Are you staying by the day or by the week? Uh, it depends. Mom likes borders by the week. Oh, you're Mrs. Bishop's boy. Yep. That a one-shot derringer? Yep. Ain't you in the army? Nope, I'm Canadian. That's the kind my father smoked. So does mine. My father was a hero. He killed more Rebs than your father. Yeah? Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Neil Swayze. My father had the same name as me, Larry. You gonna tell Mom we came in the window? Well, I don't know. You think I should? It don't scare me, only I don't like to aggravate her. It scares you plenty. Yeah, yeah. Well, how about you soldiers uh, giving me a chance to wash up, hmm? See you at supper. You and Captain Foster got the biggest rooms. He's by the week. He's a veteran. One hand. I think there'd be more business opportunities in Montreal than here. A man looks close enough, he can always find a penny rolling the wrong way. Even in St. Albans. The grain and feed business won't bring you a living. Most of the cows have been slaughtered. There aren't few horses around. No horses at all? Might be two dozen, counting both livery stables. Thirty-one, Mom, and the Harvey mares in full. Oh, my son is the real authority on St. Albans. See, then knows all. Where you people do business with the Rebs, profits must be big in Canada. It's 50-50, Captain. We sell them what we buy from you. Not from me. Present company accepted, of course. You'll excuse me, please. I have some letters to write. Oh, Mrs. Bishop, I wonder if I can make a business deal with your son. I'm going to need a guide tomorrow to help me find some of the places that Mr. Anderson told me about. Oh, Mom, can I? Can I? School, mister. I'll get someone for you. Thank you. I think Mr. Danzig would like some more mashed potatoes. Say, Captain, take a look. Morning, Captain. I sure like to have her stitch my coat. 
What do you mean by that? Oh, no offense, Captain. It's just that I ain't very handy with this needle and thread. farther along. Well, where does the bridge road go? Same place, the border. It isn't used much anymore. It's a few miles longer and bumpy. Well, I need waking up this early. Let's ride the bump, shall we? best producing farms in Vermont. Fontaine's moved away after their two sons were killed at Gettysburg. And no one's lived here since? No. Let's look around. There's nothing lonelier than an abandoned house, is there? Another year or two and people will say it's haunted. How far are we from town? Two miles. Don't tell me you're interested in this place. I might be. I guess I'm partial to haunted houses. The main highway runs from the border south, straight through St. Albans. Matter of fact, that's the only entrance and exit to the town. It's impossible to block off this highway. About a mile out of town, there's the secondary road, the bridge road. Now, that also crosses the border, but farther to the east. It's a little longer. It's rougher. They don't use it much anymore. But for us, it's perfect. I'll show you why. This road spans a river with this bridge here. Now, the river's too fast, too deep to cross. If we can destroy this one bridge, then we have a sure, safe retreat right into Canada. Another thing, the farmhouse I picked out is on this road about a mile north of the bridge. It's completely isolated, exactly what we need to keep our troops hidden. Now, our main attacking force will cross the border here and then stay undercover at the farmhouse. Five minutes hard ride, we'll bring them into town. What about guns in St. Albans, Major? Oh, we'll have to locate whatever there is before we attack. Attention. At ease, gentlemen. Sorry to interrupt you, Major. I have your volunteers lined up downstairs, all itching to be part of this raid. Oh, that's fine, sir. I'll wind this up in just a few minutes. Now, one squad will take over the church tower and the schoolhouse roof. That's here and here. Rifles can control the square from those positions. It's your job, Mr. Dupre. Three men. Yes, sir. Captain Dwyer and the squad will cut the telegraph wires at the station and then hit the commercial bank. That's here. I'll take the National Bank, Lieutenant Robinson, State Bank. That's over here on this side of the street. I've always wanted to burn down a bank. Everything except the money. <laughs> We're going to burn more than their banks. We'll let them know what the stink of war is like. We'll rub their noses in it. They'll get some idea of what our homes meant to us. May I interrupt? Yes, of course, sir. We all have reasons to hate. Some more than others. But I want a few things kept in mind. This is no guerrilla raid. We loot and sack the town, but as an act of war. The army of the Confederacy, all of you in uniform, will be attacking a thousand miles north of the main front. After St. Albans, we strike again and again. Our basic aim is to compel the enemy to divert troops for home guards, ease the pressure on General Lee. No order against burning, Colonel. Quite the contrary. Use liquid fire and destroy the town. But first of all, you'll squeeze every dollar you can out of those bank vaults. It'll buy a lot of weapons from Britain. All your arrangements made, Major? Yes, sir. We attack this Saturday, the 17th at noon. Some of the officers, Dwyer, Ramsey, Robinson, will start drifting into St. Albans this week. The rest of the men will get to the farmhouse Friday night. Excellent. Now, I have to get back to the consulate. Can you pick the men downstairs now? Yes, sir. Major Benton. May I speak to you a minute, sir? I'll be below. You haven't assigned me to anything yet, sir. 
I'm sorry, mister. You're one risk I can't afford. I told you that. I know I've been wrong, Major. I wish I could undo what happened at the prison gate, but I've earned a right to go along on this raid. I sweated out the stink of that Yankee prison along with the rest of the men. You can't take away my one chance with some real action. That's not the point. I wish you'd see my side of it, sir. I'm as southern as any of the men here. I know I've been wrong. It won't happen again. I give you my words. I'll have to think about it. I'll let you know before I leave. Thank you, sir. Georgia, 5th Cavalry, right? Yes, sir. Corporal Fred Dean, Company C. I'm glad to see you again, Corporal. Where were the Yankees holding you? Springfield, sir. A few of us escaped a couple of weeks back. Good. Remember me, Major? With you at Gettysburg. Oh, I certainly do. Henry Latimer, isn't it? Yes, sir. Some old friends of mine. Be seated, men. Major? Thank you, sir. You all know the purpose of this mission. We're going to hit the Yankee where it hurts him the most, his pocketbook. We're going to burn every stick in that town. About time. Let's start marching. That's right. That's, right. That's, right. That's going to be a tough job to slip enough of our men into St. Albans. And a lot tougher to get them out alive. That's why we've got to be careful. We're going to have to pick and choose. You'll be wearing civilian clothes up to the time of the attack. Well, I don't have to tell you what capture out of uniform will mean. A firing squad. All right. Dean, Latimer, fall out. You go along. Over here. Now, would you mind stepping up here, please? Read this out loud. I'm a citizen of Canada. I was born in Montreal. <laughs> Y'all ought to muffle your mouth if you can't talk Yankee. The other side, soldier. I, I don't mean to spoil nothing, Major, but I, I could learn Yankee talk. <laughs> Next, man. Sorry, sir. I'm from Kintel. <laughs> Next. Glad to see you back, Mrs. Frazee. How is Montreal? Cold. <laughs> uh, Lipscomb's available if you're still looking at acreage. Thanks, Mrs. Bishop is showing me around. Oh, the war zapped end up sudden-like. Push property prices up. You better decide soon. I'll be in to see you Saturday. Three days may be too long to wait. That's the soonest I can make it. I'll see you Saturday at noon. Nice to be out of that Montreal mousetrap. Keep your eyes in your head. Behave like I know what my eyes are for. Bringing all that money, the colonel see to it we get our back pay. Even though it's for time in that Yankee prison, over five hundred dollars. So what? So I like money. I like what it can buy. Save you're looking for Saturday over the business end of a rifle. Man can mix a little biology with war, can he? Not in my book. The only Yankee worth looking at's a dead one. Let's go. Anytime you need reminded why we're here, just take another look at that window. Don't rub it in. You're not the only one needs reminded. Somebody else thinking about biology.
Don't you worry about the major. Forty acres of fine cotton ripped out, his home burned black. He's got better reason to hate than most of us. Maybe so. Only I aim to make sure he doesn't change in the next two days. There's our hotel. Oh, may we stop a minute? All right. I never could pass up a bargain. And there's a wagon load of possibilities. Mister? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any large mops? Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, mister, let me see one of those large roasters. Yes, ma'am, one of our specials. Two and a half dollars. <laughs> Can I serve you, ma'am? Yes, do you have any small size salt and pepper shake? I'll look over my stock. Sorry, all out of shakers. I'll have to break this up. Can't settle stuff in the square. Our merchants don't like it. Well, that doesn't seem very fair. They look like decent sort of fellas. It isn't right to stop people from earning a living. Lots of laws don't seem right, Katie. And you wouldn't like it if somebody moved a boarding house right outside of yours. Now pack up, mister. Not very neighborly. Merchants won't let me be. Pick some other town. Well, that's just treating them like criminals. Least you could do is let them peddle house to house. One minute, Sheriff. Now, Katie. Please leave the arguments to the lawyers. You mean a citizen isn't entitled to ask you one question? Now, Katie. Well, why can't they peddle house to house? There's no law against that, is there? Oh, of course there isn't. Oh, I guess it's lawful, all right. But don't go peddling near the stores. Obliged to you, Sheriff. Nice of you, ma'am, to speak out in our favor. That's all right. No bargains for me today. I hope you all manage to do your business without aggravating the sheriff anymore. Why, thank you, sir. We'll work so quiet, he'll hardly know we're here. You can't just drop this or toss it. You've got to smash it down hard like this. All right, men, put out the fire. Works fine. Well, we'll see how fine tomorrow. We won't get another chance to meet, so let's have one final check. Captain Dwyer. Eight men inside my wagon, 12 rounds of ammunition, six incendiaries per man. Everybody in uniform, mine under my overcoat. Drive in from the railroad side at exactly 10 minutes to 12, wait for the signal. Two of my men to cut the telegraph wires. Mr. Ramsey. Two squads in my wagon. Come in by the rough road, wait at the north end. Mr. Dupay. One squad will wait 100 yards outside the square. When you open fire, we come in and herd out all the available saddle horses from both livery stables. Good. Out exactly noon when the church bell rings. Keating, Robinson, and myself will come into the square. My first shot will be the signal. Any questions? Nobody's been assigned to the houses off the square yet. There won't be time for that. We can take the time. Sherman doesn't make any exceptions. Public buildings, homes, soldiers, civilians. Makes no difference to the Yankees. The shooting civilians and burning homes would only hold us up. The Yankees didn't worry about that when they burned you out. And they killed my wife. I know that, Frank. But our job is to get away clean. Don't forget, St. Albans only the first of these raids. Any particular reason the Major's against killing and burning out civilians? Any particular reason for asking that, mister? No, sir. I want to know if there's an order against killing Yankees. No. No order. Delphine and I had quite a time convincing Reverend Lucas. He was afraid that selling dances at the bazaar tonight would turn St. Albans into another Sodom and Gomorrah. He's a blue nose. Larry, where do you pick up expressions like that? From Wrinkles Padgett, no doubt. I did not. I'm afraid I'll have to plead guilty. We happened to be discussing someone the other day, and uh, I, I used the expression. It means someone who's... Uh... Stuffy. Yeah, stuffy. Who are you discussing? No more gossip. To get back to the bazaar, I expect we'll do very well. Selling refreshments, dances, the trophy auction. 
Wrinkle's father's going to bid as high as ten dollars for one of the rebel sabers. Well, I may bid on one of those sabers myself. I never had any time for souvenirs in the war. Too busy killing rebs. This coat's... Katie, you'll excuse me, please. Oh, well, for now. But tonight, Delphine and I expect you to buy a lot of our dances. You realize he called you by your first name? Of course, don't you? You don't compare a week's acquaintance with a lifelong friend. Lionel, don't be... Don't be a blue nose. Do they? No matter how old they get, they like to watch a parade. square, then start back to the farmhouse. I'll head off the others. Get up, you Hey, Pedler. You got any tobacco to sell? Only hardware, sorry. Hey, boys. Oh, fine. Thank you. You uh, staying with us long? Not long enough. On our way to Plattsburgh. Pulling out Monday morning. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the cigars. Get choked up. Trying to lick two full platoons, they'll be gone Monday. We can wipe them out with the rest of the town. Get back to your room. How yellow are we gonna be, running out on account of two lousy Yankee platoons? Yep, moving, mister, that's an order.
already fixing the decorations and cake. Well, I have some business now, Larry. Sure. You Canadian, mister? You're along, soldier. Why did you risk coming here? I had to. Keating's missing. Missing? What do you mean? Well, I looked all over town. I can't find him. Was he drinking? Some. He bought a bottle or two around the hotel, I think. He went cursing mad when he found out the raid was called off. Kept arguing. Said we could have wiped out the Yankee platoons and the town. Come on, we've got to find him. Mr. Swayze, Katie, we certainly can use you. Well, I just drop by for a minute to look around. That look is going to cost you. We'll put you to work. No. Uh, oh, please. Katie. Reverend Lucas, here's an assistant. Oh, delighted to see you, sir. I can use reinforcements. No, really, Katie, I have a very important business appointment. At 4 o'clock on Saturday? Oh, no. There's no escape. Just surrender graciously. After all, it's for our own brave veterans, you know. I said I have an appointment. Is that an example of Canadian manners? Nowhere. Rent a rig and get to the farmhouse to... Would that flag look nice over our mantle, dear? Kind of soiled. Might be blood. Oh. Tell Dwyer and Dean I'm gonna need them in town. Well, it's risky. I know that. At least they're familiar faces. We've got to pick up Keating before he ruins everything. Yes. Dean's covering the north end of the square. Say, aren't you the hardware peddler? That's right. You wouldn't have any more of those cigars, would you? No. Have you got a spare, mister? No. Just thought I'd inquire. Robinson's watching the south end. I think you better put in an appearance inside. You're expected. No way you can get into the square without us seeing you. Mr. Swayze, Lieutenant Sidney. Mr. Swayze, Lieutenant. Sorry. I'm sorry about this afternoon. I didn't mean to be so abrupt about leaving. You don't owe me an explanation, Mr. Swayze. No, really. I, I had this appointment. I, I just wasn't sure that it would keep. Are you expecting someone now? No, I was... Uh, Admiring your decorations. Well, you did them, didn't you? Partly. That was the part that I was admiring. I'm sure they'd seem very simple and countrified in Montreal. Very elegant and expert. Have you always lived in Montreal? No, not always. Where else? Places. Places you've never seen. And I probably never will. Didn't you ever want to leave St. Albans? Often. But you can't tear up roots when they've grown so deep. These roots come out easily nowadays. Ask your soldiers here. They've been proving that. Atlanta, Chattanooga, Savannah next. That isn't fair. I suppose it's hard for a neutral to understand the rights and wrongs of this war. You're all so far away from it. Suppose you met someone from the South. Someone whose home had been burned by your General Sherman. His family wiped out. How would you go about explaining the rights and wrongs of this war to him? What do they expect from our armies? 
the nice manners of the so-called southern gentlemen, they'd burn us to the ground if they got the chance. And if they did, if they burned down St. Albert, would you understand why they had to do it? Would you be able to forgive them for that? Mr. Swayze, waited for you till one o'clock today. Oh, well, our appointment was for Monday, wasn't it? Oh, noon today. Really? Well, my apologies. I was sure we made it for Monday. At my bank, the customer's always right. Monday it is. Be careful doing business with Mr. Anderson. He's very shrewd. Well, I'm pretty shrewd myself. As a matter of fact, I may end up by taking all of his money. So, to Mr. Patrick. And now we come to the high spot of our sale. This is a symbol, my good friends, of the bravery of our soldiers and the cowardice of the rebels who abandoned this flag at Shenandoah. Talks like he was there. What am I bid for Johnny Reb's tatters? Ten dollars. Ten? Fifteen dollars! Oh, come now, my friends. Surely this symbol of Union prowess is worth much more. Twenty dollars. Thank you, Captain Foster. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Be careful, he might sell it to you. Twenty-six. Twenty-six? Seven? Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight? I am bid twenty-eight. Thirty dollars. He'll let him buy it. It means more to him than you. Thirty-one. Thirty-five. Mr. Swayze has bid thirty-five. Neil, he can't afford any more. It's very important to him. Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Forty. I am bid forty. Forty. Captain Foster? No, thank you, Reverend. A soldier's pocketbook is not as fat as a businessman's. Is forty dollars the final bid? Forty. Once. Forty-five. Forty-five. I'm bid forty-five by Katie Bishop. Fifty. Mr. Swayze bids fifty. Fifty-five. Fifty-five is the bid. Fifty-five. Uh, Mr. Swayze. Oh, no, thank you. I never bid more than once against a lady. Fifty-five. Once. Fifty-five. This once. way, Sheriff. Back to the hotel. We've got him. He's in the wagon now, drunk as a skunk. Beat a Yankee soldier to death. Anybody see it? I don't think so. Well, we can't take a chance. Tell Robinson to move their things out of the hotel. Get Keating out to the farmhouse, sober him up. Don't let him out of your sight. I'll get out there sometime tomorrow. Right, sir. Is everyone in? Yes, ma'am. Where do you want this? I told you it was yours. No, Kitty, I can't accept this from you. A, a man... We've been friends too long for you to refuse a gift from me. You wanted it, didn't you? I wanted it. Then we'll have no more arguments. Well, I'll, I'll pay you. Uh, uh, $35 now and a few dollars a week. Is it that important to you? Yes. All right, then. Katie, do you know why I wanted this flag? We can talk in the morning. In the morning, I won't be able to tell you. I've never tried to say this. I'm not a hero, I'm a fake. I never had a chance for any souvenirs, never got near any fighting. I was afraid. I tried to get hurt. Not this bad. Just enough to get sent home. I managed to fall under a case on wheel. I wanted you to know. Lionel. No, Thank you for telling me. I know how much courage it took. Good night, Kitty. Robinson, Gray, Ramsey. Dean, Corporal Dean. Captain Dwyer. 
He took three of them. Lieutenant Keating's gone. Hitch up the wagon. We're going into St. Albans. Right away, sir. I'll accept you, Lieutenant. If they catch up with Keating, they'll be able to identify you as his partner. Mom went to church with Delphine and Captain Foster. I said I'd wait for you. Oh. Well, Larry, I've got some work to do. But, Neil, it's Sunday. Yeah, I know. Some other Sunday, all right? Then I guess I won't go either. No, no, you don't. No, no, come on. Get along. I'm no blue nose. Well, going to church doesn't make you a blue nose. All decent people go to church. Ain't you decent? Come to think about it, maybe I need that fire and brimstone more than you do. Go. My good friends and neighbors, it is gratifying to see so many of you present this morning. And it is particularly gratifying to see and welcome some of our brave soldiers. In this time of crisis, we must continue Get to away. keep our thoughts and efforts when? pointed toward the one Don't ultimate know. goal. My sermon today will be on a subject. My sermon today will be on a subject very close to all of us, close to all true patriots, the rebellion. It should be of interest to all of you to be reminded that our own Holy Bible has considerable to say about rebellion. In the first book of Samuel, chapter 15, we plainly read, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And in Proverbs, chapter 17, we read again, An evil man seeketh only rebellion. A few weeks ago, Mr. Lincoln told us, Among free men, there can be no successful appeal from the ballot to the bullet. Can there be any question whose side the Lord is on? We are the right, the just, and with his help, our legions must grind the rebels into the dust. The devil himself will have to make room in his domain to receive those lost rebel souls. You sound singing Yankee lice. <coughs> Who else wants to try it? Who else? Better tell your friend the devil move over and make room for you, Yank. <laughs> Nobody spoils this! God bless you, Mr. Swayze. Must be a rebel. Anybody know him? Do you have any friends in town? He checked into the LMB Hotel with another man. Well, let's pick him up. Wonderful thing you did, Brother Swayze. Anything me or my family can ever do You're for you. You're as big a hero as my dad was, isn't he, Mom? Yes, now he is. Hey, Wrinkle, you see that quick bra? Boy! Good Lord guided your hand, Mr. Swayze. Officers are inside, sir. Come on in, Corporal. Sorry about the lieutenant, sir. Tried to stop him. 
I know. Sitting here on your tails and moping isn't going to help any. Look, I used bad judgment when I brought him along. I knew he was a risk. How much of a setback is it? We attack on schedule. Yankee cavalry will be moving out by late morning. The big hitch is that an infantry regiment gets in on that 2 o'clock train. They'll bivouac in St. Albans the rest of this week. It doesn't give us much time. No, two hours at the most. Mr. Dupre, you come into town about 8 in the morning. Use a saddle horse. I'll keep you in sight. You'll bring back word on the exact time we attack. Yes, sir. Mr. Robinson. Sir? You can take over Mr. Dupre's wagon, the rear guard squad. I don't think St. Albans is too healthy for you right now. No, sir, I guess it isn't. No. Well, I want you in town in the morning, Corporal. Yes, sir. When Captain Dwyer's wagon enters the square, get to the church belfry. Wait four minutes, and then start ringing that bell. What about my uniform, sir? Wrap it up and hide it in the church. Uh, sir, Mrs. Bishop asked if it's convenient for you to come down to the parlor. She said, please, sir. I think you know everyone, Neil. No matter. We all know Mr. Swayze. You've made us realize what it is to count our daily blessings, sir. Sunday. They got a surprise for you, Neil. Sorry. <laughs> I can't blame the boy, Katie. He likes Mr. Swayze as much as we grown-ups do. Yeah. You tell him, Josiah. It looks like St. Albans doesn't want to lose you, Mr. Swayze. Yes, sir. They even fixed it so you and I can't do business. There's a first-class acreage back of Gilman's livery stable, and the town's buying it for you. We like to hold on to our heroes. I can't accept it. Son, when Vermont people give something away, it just naturally falls in with the larger miracles. <laughs> I've got a special reason. Property owners can vote. So happens that I'm running for re-election. <laughs> Have the deed ready for you tomorrow afternoon. Stop by and pick it up. Meeting's adjourned, folks. Glad you're going to be one of us. Hope you join the church real soon. Congratulations, Mr. Swayze. You can figure out my grain business. What the Reverend don't see or smell can't bother him. You want me to show you your property, Neil? No, son. Now you know why I love St. Albans. You certainly captured our town. Katie, I wish I'd... Mr. Swayze. Bad time for you, mister. I'll tuck you in. That's for babies. <laughs> Good night, Neil. Will you show me that quick draw tomorrow? He's quite taken with you. He's a wonderful boy. First, I'd like to apologize for bidding against you last night. You've got that upside down. I'm the one who should be apologizing to you, both of you. Well, it doesn't matter. The point is, I want you to have it now. No, it's yours. It doesn't fit me. Neil, you earned it. Lionel means it. I wish you'd take it. Keep it.
I got something to tell you. No matter how... Well, soldiers sometimes have to do things they don't want to do. You're a spy. No, not really. I don't know, maybe your father would have known how to explain this to you. You see, Larry, he wanted to fight for his country. Well, there are other men like me. We want to fight for our country. You're a spy, a dirty spy. Stop that. Now listen to me. I want you to stay in this house. Stay away from the square. No matter how much noise or shooting there is, don't leave this house. Stay close to your mother. Keep her inside. Is Larry with you? Mom! 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 Katie, you try to warn the people, they'll be shot down. My men are already in the street. No matter how you feel about me, try to think of Larry. Keep him in this house. You'll be safe here, I promise that. Miss Bishop! Miss Bishop, something's wrong with Mr. Larry. He says he's going after the cavalry. Stop him. He's already gone, sir. Confederate Army. You'll stay where you are. You'll obey all orders. Mr. Ramsey, empty the town hall, then burn it. Yes. Shall we go inside, Mr. Anderson? We're going to make a withdrawal. No matter what happens. Hold him here. I'll be right back with a combination. Yes, sir. Talk him after dinner. Let's come. I have a family, Mr. Anderson. I forbid it. You can't. Keep quiet, Pops. Clean it up. much time someone went after that Yankee cavalry. Sure, Major? Yes, I'm sure. Keep your men moving. Did you the one that had them trophies in the window? Huh? Another one for you.
Hold it, soldier. Just keep him with the others. Mr. Ramsey, where's Captain Foster? Who? The recruiting officer. Oh, he slipped us somewhere inside the building. We'll hear from him as soon as he gets hot enough. Take the other! We've got to get him down from there, sir. He's got two guns. I'll get him down. I'll burn him down. Filthy coward. Are you all right, sir? Yes. I didn't get him from the roof. Yeah. Lee! Purple Lee! Yes, sir. The balcony! The town hall! My wagon, sir. No, it's all right. <laughs> you take over. I solemnly swear to obey, fight for, fight for and maintain. Yes, sir. Fight for and maintain the laws of the Constitution of the Confederate States of America. Makes everything nice and legal. Can't nobody call us robbers now. It's just a patriotic contribution. Start reciting, Pop. Come on. Go on, blast him. Stop that. Put these people outside with the others. Throw that money in Captain Dwyer's wagon. Major, do I use this now? That's what it's for. you told Keating the other night. Our job is to get away clean. St. Albans is only the first of these raids. Get pretty close, Baker. Captain Foster, march these civilians down to this end of the square and hold them there. Don't move. He wants the users to block the road. I gave you an order, Foster. This is a battlefield. It's no different from Atlanta or Chattanooga. 
Stay where you are. All of you. Captain Dwyer, I'm going to cross over to your wagon. If these people haven't moved by then, take Foster out of line and shoot him. Yes, sir. He'll do it, Colonel. He'll kill you. Please, all of you, go down the road. Hurry, please. You try to hurry. Hurry. I want to go down. Please, please, for me. Two minutes now, Major. Come on down. We're moving out. Soldier. Get me a couple of horses. Mr. Ramsey? Yes, sir. Pull this. Unhitch this team. Anything of value inside? No, sir. All the money's in Captain Dwyer's wagon. Blockade this into the street. Take your men out. Keep going till you're across the border. You're not coming, Major? We'll be along, but don't stop anywhere to wait for us. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, sit them down on the road. Come on, sit down! Final, please. Come in. Oh, I got him. Oh. down the front of the platoon when they round the bend. Put it away. A nine-year-old boy riding with it. Put it away.
If they burn down Zeno, would you understand why it had to be done? Do you think you'd be able to forgive them for that?